Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, I have gotten some interest in going through the code in detail for newer programmers who can't just, you know, who aren't comfortable just looking at the code on GitHub or just kind of freeze framing the previous video where I kind of like live code this thing. Um, so I want to go over the the kind of process uh, and the, the program step by step. I'm just going to run through it. It's a really simple program. I mean, the whole thing is like, if you remove all the spaces, it's probably 50 lines of Python. Um, and, and there's very little logic in here, really. So I'm going to go through it step by step. OK, so I do assume that you have very basic familiarity with Python. If not, just spend uh, you know, a few days just learning Python. And then uh, this will kind of all make sense, my explanation. OK, so in case this is called from the shell, we have the shebang line here. Um, and then we use this kind of portable version of uh, this just tells the kernel, uh, hey, if you're being run as uh, an executable, like as a script, then um, just run user bin env python and then whatever whatever python version um, we have is is going to get used then we import some uh, libraries that we're going to use it's overkill like logging is overkill for this but um, i wanted to show using it so we're going to import the logging library uh, we use a few um, kind of batteries included stuff that comes with python like os and time we're going to use the sub process and select. So this is for our log file polling. And then Nexmo, uh, which is now Vonage. It's been renamed, but the library is still the same. And Nexmo is how we actually send text messages. OK, so again, big picture. You probably should have just quickly watched the other video to uh, to watch me actually composing this, because you, you know, you, you know, I'm not writing it like line 1 to line 74 or whatever it is. I'm writing a little chunk of it and then moving it around and then writing another chunk and then putting those chunks together. So it's it's much more growing than just being written start to end. So we're initializing the log stuff. This is probably the last thing that I wrote actually, but we're just gonna set up a, a, some logging and then say that we're gonna log out everything that's level info or above basically everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is guard against missing information. We absolutely need all of these configuration things here, like our source phone number that has been assigned to us from Vonage to send text messages from, a target phone number that we actually send messages to, a key and a secret for actually hitting the Vonage API. When I say Vonage, like it, it's written as Nexmo here because um, that's what it used to be called and their library is still called that. So basically we're making sure that we have all the information we need so that when we do all this stuff sending text messages we don't suddenly have like empty values and get a bunch of errors okay so if we find an exception like if we can't get any of these from as environment variables passed in we're gonna send a critical log message saying and we should uh we're actually gonna exit <laughs> i totally forgot to add that <laughs> we're gonna exit with a with, with an error code with one then we're gonna initialize. So now we know that we kind of have everything that we need to rock and roll. We're gonna initialize the Nexmo client to actually send messages with, and we're gonna pass in that stuff that we got from our environment variables, which is the stuff we need to set up a, a connection to our, our text message sending API is just a key and a secret to authenticate, and then it'll let us uh, send messages with our account. Okay, so we're gonna go over this from a high level and then we're going to kind of zoom in on each function. So you should know that we're basically rolling with three functions here. So the first function just pulls a log file and calls another function whenever that log file uh, changes. Another function just checks, takes basically a string that is a log line, and it looks to see if it matches something that we care about. And if so, it does something. The third function we have is actually sending a text message. So you can see by splitting these up, I can test each of these specific pieces of functionality that my program has individually. And uh, it just allows me to have a much cleaner kind of like workflow, testing flow. Not everything has to work for me to test this thing, right? I've decomposed into a few functions and I can test those functions individually. And you'll see me do that in the video. So first I just wrote this. I wrote this code, and not even as a function, 
And I just tried sending a text, uh, like sort of text message through the API. And then I saw, oh, interesting. When I do that wrong, I get some errors. So I basically wrote some error handling for those errors to tell me when that is happening. And otherwise I'm just gonna like assume that it succeeded and there's my function. Now you can see it takes a message. That's the only thing it needs kind of from the outside. So we pass in a message and it uses that in, during the API call as the message text, right? So this is where I'm actually talking to, to Nexmo using that client that we set up at the beginning. This bit at the end, it's kind of a standard Pythonism. Um, basically, if, if this script was called directly, then we're just gonna run the, the function that is actually gonna like run for a long time and pull var log off log. Um, this is a Python thing that basically guards against executing code that you don't want executed if your program is imported. So for example, if I import this file from another Python script that I'm writing and all I want for some reason is the send SMS function. Well, when I import this, nothing will happen. Like this program won't run, it won't tail auth log because name won't be main uh, because I'm not actually executing this file like on the command line uh, in a shell somewhere. It's basically a way of having your code be sort of reusable from other places if this is a large project without executing the code specifically that would run if you ran it as a script directly. Okay, again, there's probably a bunch of ways to design this program and to kind of compose it, but this is just the way that I chose. Different programmers might implement this in different ways. Now, a really simple problem like this, you're probably gonna have an implementation that's very similar, but still, how you abstract these things, how you cut these functionalities apart, how these functions interact, different programmers are gonna choose different ways of doing it. They all have advantages and drawbacks, and that's just that's just life. We all, we all learn to get along. So uh, let's look at how these are composed together. So you can see, basically, if we kind of mimic in our heads the execution of this program, uh, we're being called directly, let's say. So the pull log file function is called. That's at the top. So let's look at what this does. Okay, it's going to use the subprocess module to run the tail command on our file name, which we passed in as file name, remember, and that was varlog auth log. Well, varlog auth log is where a lot of Linux distributions, uh, including Ubuntu, put authentication events. That's users uh, becoming other users, uh, users logging in and opening new shell sessions, SSH uh, sessions being opened, users running sudo, that kind of thing. So we're tailing that log file. And uh, basically, you don't have to worry too much about this implementation. It's a tiny bit complicated. But basically, we're going to pull that file, we're going to check it repeatedly, and then if um, if there's been changes since the last time we pulled it, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, do something with whatever new log lines were added. If that makes sense. So here's a while loop. It's going to run forever, uh, basically until we kill this program. We never exit, so as long as as long as uh, this doesn't crash for some reason, it's gonna it's gonna be doing this. So while true, it is checking to see if some new stuff has come out of uh, pulling that file, and if so, it's gonna on that file it's gonna read one line off of standard out, and then it's gonna go back to sleep. This line has been passed to another function, process log entry which is right here. And you can see it takes a log line. So this is the log line we're passing in, whatever just changed in the log. And now we're gonna check to see if that matches the things we care about. So there's only two things we care about right now. You could add a bunch more, or you could ignore some of these, it doesn't matter. The only time that this function does anything is if both the words, they're the sort of strings, sudo and command are in the line that we just read in, or if both SSH and accepted are in that line. And here's kind of a comment explaining what those cases mean. And in both of those cases, uh, and you could make this just one really long statement, but it doesn't, doesn't look nice. Uh, in either of those cases, we're gonna send an SMS uh, with that log line in it. Does that make sense? If it's anything else, and you can see me test this in the video, if the log line is anything else, we, we don't care. We don't do anything. We just return. 
and this function returns and nothing happens and then we sleep for another second and go through this loop again, if that makes sense. So what happens when we actually send the SMS message? Well, that's the first function we looked at and it's simply us sending via the Nexmo client, which kind of knows how to interact with their API. You could do a, you don't need to use their client. It's a very simple API and you can literally just um, use like the, an HTTP library or something like requests in Python is a great library um, to send a, uh, presumably a post request to um, this API endpoint, just using raw HTTP. You don't need to use this client, but I'm, I'm using it because it's there, it's convenient, and uh, it's easy to demonstrate with. So I fire off this text message and I, I capture whatever it returns, I capture in a response. You don't have to do this if you don't care if it succeeds or fails and you never have any logic based on that, you don't have to capture it, but I'm capturing it and I'm calling it response. It's an HTTP response, so I'll figure it out. And you know, I've inspected this in the, uh, it's one of the great advantages of a, a language like Python, it has a REPL, a read eval print loop. That's the interactive Python uh, shell basically. So I can run this program step by step and I can learn when I get this back, I can kind of inspect this object. Hey, what is it? What attributes does it have? What type is it? And I saw that it was basically a dictionary and I could access it like this. And if it has messages, then I look at the, at the status of whatever's returned. And if it's not zero, it's a, the string zero, which tripped me up. I was checking for an, a literal number, not a string. But if it's zero, that means everything worked. Uh, and if it's not zero, then clearly something happened and we want to log out whatever the error text is. That seemed to be something that it consistently gave me on the object that I could look up if it was an error. Otherwise, everything worked and we successfully sent that text message. And that's literally the entire program in, in detail. I didn't have to design it exactly this way. Maybe you would come up with another approach. But you know, in a few hours, this is this is kind of what I came up with. It sort of made sense to me to divide this program in this way, uh, and I hope that's useful for you. Um, I think it's so it's so valuable to um, to see like more real life things instead of just like really really simple tutorials uh, when you're learning to program. And doing projects like this, even if you kind of don't know how when you start, is maybe the most important thing when you're learning to program. Uh, you just there's there's only so much you can learn from kind of like copying someone else's code um, without fully understanding it and especially without fully working through all the problems and all the dead ends and all like the wasted time that's just part of the learning and you become a much better programmer much faster when you don't just kind of like type in the end result I think it also gives you kind of a skewed um, a skewed vision of what programming should be like like oh, I'm so slow because I keep making these wrong turns it's like yeah well everyone does they just don't put it in the final product and then they pretend to like type that shit in perfectly the first time so that is it I hope that was helpful um and if you want I can maybe do a separate video explaining kind of the second half of this which is how I made uh how I made this uh, I mean the service is simple enough but how the system d stuff works around uh, creating a service. Cool. I hope that's been helpful. Peace.